One team has been dominating North America's Wild Rift competitive scene since its inception. On the eve of the Summoner Series second major, I sit down and talk with Hot Sauce, the manager of Tribe Gaming. And the NCO is just gonna isolate him out. The rest of the fight has already erupted into chaos. Tribe, they've eliminated four members of Louis, the last one. That's going to be it! Tribe, through thick and thin, we got the best of five. We had games back to back, full series. But for Tribe Gaming, prevail through all. They are the ones that stand a titan over the rest. And they are your first major champions of the Wild Rift Summoner Series. Let's go, Tribe. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Rift Recap and presented by Mobile Gaming Corps. I'm Lexi. Really excited to have another special guest. And today it is Hot Sauce. There he is. Say what's up to everybody. What's up, guys? How you doing? Well, welcome to the show. Thank you for being on. So uh, first off, I guess, uh, tell me about yourself. Um, introduce yourself and talk about your history and mobile and how you kind of got to where you are now. And what is your current role with Tribe Gaming? Yeah, thanks. So. What's up, guys? I'm Hot Sauce. I'm the uh, head coach for Tribe's Wild Rift team. Um, I've been with Tribe since, I think, 2017. But uh, before that, um, I started just as a normal player for the uh, mobile Nova called Vainglory. Um, and I pretty quickly realized, you know, I was decent, but, you know, nowhere near uh, the top level. So I kind of uh, was smart to transition early on to you know like an analyst position for a team um and then i think 2016 or so i was fortunate to be uh given the head coaching role for uh immortals vainglory team and shortly after that um we did pretty well and immortals decided to jump out of vainglory and then that's when tribe uh swooped us up and bought our roster uh and so since around 2017, I think I've been with Tribe with a lot of these guys. And uh, we were fortunate enough to win two uh, world championships in Vainglory. Uh, and uh, ever since then, uh, kind of stayed with Tribe and then moved to Wild Rift uh, as, soon as, that, as soon as that was released. Nice, nice. So you guys uh, definitely been in the mobile scene for a long time. Tribe is definitely one of the most recognized names in mobile gaming and actually transitioning across to the tier one organizations as well, um, based on your guys' uh, current initiatives that you guys have released um, and been working on. Um, so now that you're into Wild Rift, uh, obviously the, the game's been out for a while now, but did you guys have like a different vetting process or how did you guys come up with your team? Because obviously a lot of players played in each alpha and beta version. Was there specifics you were looking for or was it kind of like, um, we'll just see what happens because I believe you guys were the first to pick up an NA roster if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, for sure. So we knew all along, I mean, even years ago, uh, since there were rumors of Wild Rift coming out, that uh, we had a special group of guys from our uh, Bangalore roster, and we wanted to hang on to them. We knew that uh, they would be successful. They've been, a few of these guys have been, you know, world class in multiple games, not just Vainglory. Uh, a few of them played auto chess, rules of survival, and been on the international stage in multiple games. So uh, we knew we had a group of guys that we wanted to hang on to. Um, and so that was our core group. And then uh, we did try out a few other players before uh, finally arriving at this roster now. Um, and all of them are former Vainglory pros. Uh, four of them have been on a Tribe Vainglory roster at one point, and four of them have been. Four of them were on a World Championship roster at different times. So um, it was really we knew we had a select group of guys that were going to be successful. So we we wanted to make sure we hung on to them. Yeah, that's that's very interesting because um, there was some chatter. I'm not going to say a lot, but between who was going to be better, was it going to be the VG pros or the AOV pros? And uh, I think now yeah. most teams do have a combination of, of some of both. And, and some of them mm -hmm. even do have PC players as well from League. Sure. So the mm -hmm. diversity is great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we, you know, had, we always had that same question in the back of our mind too. But we knew that these guys were just so good that uh, we were confident in their ability to be successful in this game. 
Yeah, and I mean, so, uh, one of them starting uh, specifically took off huge uh, from from off rip like streaming. He was very mm -hmm. smart. He was yeah. uh, intelligent to go into the content first, and and mm -hmm. then once he became top tier in on the rankings on the leaderboards in game, that's kind of. He was smart in the aspect, hey, I'm streaming, by the way, here's my rank. And he would do crazy, crazy long streams, so uh, yeah, shout out yeah, to him. Yeah, he's definitely a grinder. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, right now, and then speaking of that, from that point, literally, uh, once the team was picked up, you guys have seriously dominated uh, the NA scene and even the EU scene. People people forget that you guys had an EU team as well, so um, yeah. and you guys, your pedigree is amazing with multiple championships across the board. Um, is there is there any kind of like specifics you guys go into um, when you're planning your day, especially with the the major two coming up for you guys, or yeah. do you guys just kind of try and keep it casual? No, so I would say you know typically I'll just lay it out. Um, you know, guys they they grind the leaderboard, you know, grind the uh, public queue anywhere from two to six hours a day on their own time. And that, you know, that's first and foremost, the most important thing. Um, that's where you get, you know, your basic mechanical ability and your basic game knowledge. And, uh, you know, that's where you work on your hero, per, hero pool diversity, that sort of thing. So that, you know, that's your core component. And then after that, we do anywhere from one to two scrim blocks a day, um, depending on just scheduling. And then probably on top of that, we do probably, you know, two to four VOD reviews, a week um and that's additional VOD reviews i mean after every single game you know we probably spend 10 15 minutes reviewing what happened in that game um but you know that that's we're lucky that we're in a position where uh tribe is giving these guys the ability to be full-time players uh, to an extent so they definitely put in a lot of hours and uh you know it shows um, you mentioned something there that they can be full time. They can do focus yeah. on this, and I do believe that does give them the competitive advantage, in my opinion, from people yeah. that may not necessarily have the time to put in, and because they don't have the support from the orgs. But mm -hmm. I mean, for the ones that are still grinding, specifically, uh, and we'll, we'll touch on this later. Uh, Enemy, another team with um, mm -hmm. v very good players, a lot of pedigree in them as well. Yeah. Like maybe they don't have that same type of support, so maybe they're they don't have as much structure. Um, but yeah. there definitely was a lot of orgs, big names specifically that I think that came in that may. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe their tactics are different, but as far as from what I saw, uh, the name is definitely big, but the yeah. outcome was still exactly the same. I mean, even with Cloud9, Immortals, and Sentinels coming in, you guys still won, and with the one team that pushed you guys to the limits was Enemy, so yeah, how does, you know, how does that feel? But, yeah, it's funny, you know, all of these teams are constantly getting better, and with these other orgs picking up roster, rosters it's going to empower those players to uh continue to get better so you know we can't just sit around and just always assume the outcome is going to be the same we have to constantly grind to get better um uh, enemy you know is a, a specific case maybe an outlier they have some excellent players uh dnzo is actually a former vainglory world champion of ours um so they have some great players and you know when the time is right for them i'm sure they'll they'll join an org um but they're they're just a great team themselves yeah and and it's like you said dnzo is one of you guys is uh one of the people that you know and yeah. um i i don't know we'll find out if, if they were an outlier because they did do well against some of the other teams going in and sure i don't mean like they're an outlier in that that was a one-off performance for them i think oh as in like gonna be one of the best okay. teams it's just they don't necessarily have the support structure mm -hmm. that some of these other top teams have and they're still you know so good that they're able to just make it work and that might actually be better for them because they will yeah. have opportunity to basically show their value and then offer mm -hmm. uh, they they could have gotten less basically um yeah and, sure. and i don't want to go into the business side of things but um sure it's definitely they do have a bright opportunity so yeah um the second major is this weekend um i think mm -hmm. it starts tomorrow and uh it comes with the chance for you guys to book your ticket to the first na championship for wild rift and from what I've seen rumors, the champion of that goes to whatever um, World International um, uh, competition is going to be. I don't know if that's accurate. I haven't seen anything from Riot stating this. Um, yeah, I think it's all rumors at this point. Um, we're, you know, operating at 
under the, you know, we're, we're just trying to win every single competition that we're uh, put in. So if there is like this world championship that we're invited to, you know, obviously we're going to be uh, thrilled to be a part of that, but we're, you know, no matter what the goal is to just win every single tournament and let everything else fall in place. Yeah. And how have the scrims been going? You mentioned that uh, with the other support, has the gap closed? Do you think the gap is closed? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I can definitely see every team getting better. Um, so it is by no means a given that we're going to win this. You know, we know that we have to play extremely well. We have to prepare extremely well. We have to draft, you know, we have to do everything well, uh, at the highest level to be able to win. So I, I don't see any of this being a pushover or a foregone conclusion whatsoever. These teams are getting really good. Yeah, they, they definitely are getting good. And, and everything I feel like is, has gone and came so fast. It was just, what, seven months ago? We were waiting for it to come. Um, yeah. And with your experience in past mobile, mobile games, like, do you feel like the sustainability of this esports uh, system that we're building can last for a while. Do you think that uh, Riot will definitely implement everything so more orgs will want to join and that it'll be a sustainable future? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Riot seems very committed to, uh, you know, being the one to legitimize mobile MOBAs uh, competitively. And uh, I think it's been, you know, a good earner for them so far. I don't, you know, I'm obviously not privy to that sort of information, but uh, every indication that we have so far is it's been good. And, you know, Tribe is 100% committed to, you know, being the best when it comes to these mobile games. So uh, we're, we're all in with it, you know, no matter what. Yeah, and that, that's obviously going to be good for you guys in the future as well. Yeah. If there is some type of franchising and stuff, you guys already have that, that imprint as the best in North America right now. Right. So definitely good luck to you guys tomorrow. Um, any predictions or is there any team that's been giving you more problems or do you think um, it should still be smooth tribe wins tomorrow? I wouldn't say smooth. I think enemy is definitely, um, you know, the team to look out for. Uh, there's been a little bit of shakeup with some of the rosters. Uh, so there might be some unexpected things, you know, with uh, Immortals and Cloud9 that... Uh, people haven't seen before so there could be some wild cards in there from them uh but you know i i definitely know it's going to be a hard fought battle no matter what yeah and you mentioned the 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 shake up with the roster and the new patch dropping so you guys have to adapt yeah. to uh item builds and synergies as well so um any final thoughts uh that you want to give out to your fans out there before we close it out yeah, I mean, thanks, you guys, for being a part of this. Um, you know, your support really helps us. We see that. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. And thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to Tribe. Uh, thanks to Discord, Razor, you know, Elgato. All these guys, you know, help us do, you know, do this, which is, you know, a hobby and passion. So I uh, wouldn't be able to do it with any, uh, without any of that. Absolutely. It's a, definitely a beautiful thing to see mobile orgs succeeding in multiple AAA titles. So good luck tomorrow, and uh, thanks for doing the interview. Again, I am Legacy for the Rift Recap presented by Mobile Gaming Corps. Thanks for watching, and peace.